Dennis and Callahan continuing their conversation with John Henry and Larry Lucchino. So after the 7-20 and 20 September, you miss the playoffs, the manager departs. So now the reconstruction process begins with a managerial search. A managerial search headed up by a general manager who is being pursued by the Chicago Cubs. Time now for the multi-million dollar question. The Cubs have asked for permission to talk to Theo Epstein. Will you grant that permission? John? Have you? How do you know that? Because, I mean... Yeah, those things are, that... are supposed to be uh, kept private, and we have a policy of not discussing who has been, whether permission has been asked for X or Y or Z. In fact, every year we get uh, requests from people. We never discuss them publicly. We uh, It's been our policy. It's okay, but I've practice. never heard anybody to, uh, uh, say it hasn't happened, just like we've heard well, no one deny that there was drinking in the clubhouse. Uh, uh, but our position on that is that we don't comment on, on, on requests. We've gotten requests in, uh, every year, sometimes one or two or three a year mm -hmm. from people. We don't talk about them publicly. We, a few years ago, we got a request from t another team about Theo Epstein. You heard nothing about that because we didn't discuss it publicly. Did you give and there's permission? good reason. I think there's good reason for it too. These are uh, there's some privacy considerations here. I don't know that people uh, would want their uh, their career development or their job decisions to be uh, debated publicly, or for people to know what they're what they're considering or not considering. So, and I'm not sure the other team necessarily would like that to be to be made public. So, our consistent policy and practice has been not to discuss whether someone has had a, whether uh, they, there's been a request made for a well, permission. Well, well, why does granted. it generally work? You've been around a long time in baseball. Do teams generally give him, or do you say, screw you, we got him on a well, contract, think, he's our guy. I'll tell you what we, what we have done. We, we have done both. You've done we, both. We, we have done both in, in, in the past. I mean, there are, there are numerous individuals. Uh, the, I mentioned that Theo was, was one of them in the past. We... Uh, we've had uh, uh, a number of our uh, high-ranking uh, people Larry. move on. I was going to say, John, I got a hypothetical for you. If the Dodgers call and ask permission to talk to Larry, will you grant it? I'm not going to say which <laughs> team or how many times this happened, but it has happened. And one, of the, as Larry said, one of the things that happens is if if it gets out and and he doesn't go, and in this case, of course, he didn't go, then. Somebody, somebody looks bad. Either the team looks bad that asked and was, and and they said no, or, or if he does, if he goes and interviews for the job and doesn't get it, then, which didn't happen right. by the way. All right. Without asking you to confirm that the Cubs have put in a request, let me pose the hypothetical question: If a team, Team A, came to you and said we'd like to talk to Theo, would you grant them permission to do that? There's a there is a certain protocol in this game, and it is if. If someone uh, asks permission for a, a job that's not lateral, mm -hmm. you give them permission. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just the way it works. Now, I'm sure there are examples where it didn't happen, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Where somebody said, we're still not. I'm sure we've done that in the past. Mm -hmm. Do they play so, games with that and say, oh, we're going to add some title and call them, you know. Yeah, th th that's just, been known to happen. That's, th that we'll, is, we'll that has been known to happen. I don't mean, uh, we don't mean to sound evasive on this, but this is a one subject when that we don't think uh, there, there needs to be full disclosure. I mean, we, our fans have a, a keen interest in knowing as much about this team as they can possibly know. But there are some things that go, come up against the line of uh, uh, personal privacy where there are some considerations that should be factored into it and that's where we are with respect to this thing but can you possibly pull the trigger on a new manager until you have solidified exactly who your general manager is going to be this year next year and years going forward well we're actively engaged in that search uh for a for a new manager we're not sitting around uh, twiddling our thumbs oh, I understand so that. there's a lot to be done theo is actively engaged uh, day to day in, in in that search we just had a meeting with them the other day going through a list of candidates possibilities ben charrington is actively involved in that process uh, certainly John Tom and I are involved in it uh, as well and uh, uh, that process is moving moving ahead and it's that's not going to happen overnight uh, there'll be some time that will pass so there's a lot of work to be done and, and Theo and Ben are knee-deep in doing it. are you interviewing guys not yet but I think one one point needs to be made and it is that as I look out over the landscape of what's been said over the last couple of weeks I don't think people understand the governance of, of the Red Sox. Um, when we talk about a manager, general manager issues, when we talk about uh, uh, important decisions that are made here, this isn't John or it isn't Larry. We really 
over the last 10 years have consistently done things collectively. So there's no, you know, the, this, this is a collective process. So we're intimately involved in the manager search. It's not just Theo that's involved. Um, and, and with what, with regard to, uh, uh, what happened with the manager situation previously, we, we do, we make collective decisions. We get, we build consensus and we don't, there's no one, when we sign Adrian Gonzalez, that's not a one person decision. Right. It's not just the general manager. But that being said, we are very good. Maybe in some, sometimes uh, we're too chain of command. We do, we don't make, Larry and I don't make baseball decisions. Well, does Dan, let players. me just add that Tom, take... Tom Warner is a, a critical part of this as well. Right. While he is not here today at this instant, he is an active part of this process. And and, and uh, the uh, the notion, when we are a better organization because of the uh, collaboration, the input. If you take uh, John, Tom, and myself, we've probably got something like 45 or 50 years collectively of running major league baseball franchises so uh, we take advantage of that experience we collaborate we debate we question each other and and that's how things happen why isn't system. why isn't werner here by the way did he slip on his yacht <laughs> no hey, he doesn't no, have a yacht no, but he's, he's getting he's oh, getting a, a little uh, uh well-needed rest here well, for, uh, tell me this day. you mentioned andrew gonzalez i blame you guys all the time for carl crawford because i can't imagine theo operated on his own on that one it's a major mistake does the GM deserve the blame for that? Because he gets the blame. I, I I have to think ownership steps in when you when you spend 140 million dollars on a guy. We just outlined. Uh, I, I we tried to outline a collective process, a collaboration that takes place between baseball operations, the general manager, and and, and so you all, share the blame us. for. Coke we Coke. share the success and we share the blame absolutely with respect for, to that. But how uh, big a free agent like like Mike Cameron is everyone involved in that? Bobby Jenks, or does it have to reach a certain well, there, point? There are certain presumptions of uh, of uh, regularity that attach to the recommendations that come from the general manager and from baseball operations. So you all but thought we, Carl Crawford was a good idea. Um, <laughs> that's a, at the time we when we made the decision, we all we all concurred in the decision. Here's a question that a hundred people have asked me to ask you, John Henry. What does the owner of the Boston Red Sox think about his general manager who on one hand helped orchestrate two World Series wins, but on another hand has spent over a half a billion dollars on free agents that aren't exactly working out with Renteria, Lugo, Drew, maybe Lackey, maybe Carl Crawford, Bobby Jenks, and the others. He's spending your money not always wisely. What do you think about that? I think that's one of the problems in baseball. It's hard to predict things. It's hard to predict how performance going forward. Um, when I look back over the last 10 years and, and the last eight years with Tito being here, the last I guess, nine years that, that uh, Theo has been here, uh, and I look at what we've accomplished every year, including this year, we felt we were headed for World Series. And the only thing that's, re not the only thing, but the biggest thing to us every year is playing in October. That's what That's what we do. That's what we spend all of our time doing is trying to, to create an atmosphere. People talk about, well, we're business-oriented. We're business-oriented for one reason. This guy <laughs> is a tremendous revenue generator for one one reason, and that is to be able to give the right people the amount of money that it takes to be successful. And you can you can criticize the things that he's done, but we've averaged what? I don't know how many 90 wins plus year, wins, 92, something like that. You finished third two years in a row. We and did. We and were we are, on our way this year. And we are not unmindful of that. This was a disappointing, torturous end of the season. I mean, yeah. we, we, as John said earlier, we watch every game. Every and, inning. Uh, and every we suffer. We are, uh, we're in this because we are competitive people. Go back to December 21st. 2001, our very first press conference, the first thing we said is we have an obligation to field a team that's worthy of the fan support. And we feel that now. We, uh, Believe me, uh, it hurts not to be playing right now. This kind of weather, I keep thinking, walking around the ballpark yesterday, we should be playing. Uh, you know, it's not, the, it's cold comfort, uh, the, shadden, the sense of schadenfreude that comes from the Yankees <laughs> losing. That's not a noble emotion, I know, but, uh, but we, we have it. But we should be out there playing, and we, we want to, uh, uh, we want that every year, and we've had a, a good run at it. But the challenges next year are real, and they're there, and we're, we're, we are prepared to deal with them. Sports Radio WEEI, now on 93.7 FM in Boston.